Family's the most important thing. Don't do what I did. I put work in front of family. I thought it was more important to be somebody out there than the damn failure I was in my own home. Listeners and welcome to episode 26 of the DNA Film Wars podcast. Today we are reviewing the film The Mule, star directed by Clint Eastwood, written by Nick Schenk, and based on a magazine article written by Sam Dolnick, I believe. And starring Clint Eastwood, Bradley Cooper, Teresa Farmiga, Allison Eastwood, Michael Pena, Andy Garcia, and Lawrence Fishburne. So, uh, I guess I like to consider myself a little bit of a Clint Eastwood fanboy. Um, so my initial thoughts on this are, you know, it's, it's a solid Clint Eastwood movie. It's not perfect. I'll talk about, you know, some of the things that are wrong with it. But you're, you're not going to get me to talk bad about Clint Eastwood. And I don't think this movie deserves to be talked bad about. But, um, I mean, we'll get into it. What did you think? Uh, I really liked it. I think Clint Eastwood did a great job writing and directing it. Um, so it's he a solid movie. It. Or, I mean, I guess directing and starring in it, but yeah. he did a great job with it. All right, so uh, story. I guess I'll start with story. Go for it. So bas- the basic plot is uh, Clint Eastwood is, he grows flowers. What do they call those? Florists? Maybe. He's, a, he's a florist, but... Uh, a florist. Anyway. Or a botanist, I don't know. A botanist studies plants. Um, it's whatever. Anyway, he grows... A, he grows daylilies is what he does. Uh, he grows daylilies, and he, uh, I guess, has been doing this for many, many, many years, and he goes around and wins awards for best flowers and stuff. But he's not being a very good family man, and he's uh, been on the road more than he has been with his family, and his family, his wife's divorced him a long time ago, and his daughter doesn't have anything to do with him cause she, because he missed her wedding. But his granddaughter wants to be in his life, or wants him to be in her life, so she tries to stay connected. But anyway... So he, uh, his house gets foreclosed on, and so he gets into the drug business by being a mule for the drug cartel, and essentially that's the main plot of the story, and at the end of the movie, he gets caught. And, um, so, I mean, nothing complicated. It did surprise me, because from the trailers, I, I thought the movie was going to be that he had been a mule for a long time, and... That's what I thought was This was going to be, happen. like, his last job. But actually, that's not it. that's not it. He is not a drug mule at the start of this movie. He actually doesn't start trafficking drugs till I don't know about half an hour into this movie or so. And he's uh, it's kind of funny because he's an old man just now starting to traffic drugs and everything. But I think overall the story's pretty well put together. He's uh, it's it's pretty it's really focused. Clint Eastwood is the main focus of this movie ninety percent of the time. There was a a point where I was afraid that we were going to stop focusing on Clint Eastwood and he was kind of be going to be a back burner story to this subplot we have going on about uh, the drug family in Mexico. And, like, I guess one of the, um, I don't think he's the drug lord's kid, but one of the underlings of the drug lord, like, kills the main drug lord and takes over. And I thought they were going to kind of shift focus to spotlight that plot, but they actually don't. They only spend a few minutes with that. And then we get back to Clint Eastwood and his his stuff. Um, but I really like everything that's done here with Clint Eastwood's character. I think his uh, his characterization is good. I like the relationships or lack of relationships that they focus on with his family. I like how he kind of reconnects with his ex-wife towards the end of the movie when she's dying of cancer. And then his family all comes together for him at the end when he gets caught. When he, and he's uh, sentenced to prison, and you know they all kind of reconnect there at the end and get along. I also uh, think that one of the uh, big things in this movie that I think a lot of people may, some people, I don't know about people, a lot of people go watch this movie because I think a lot of people who go watch this movie are going to be older people who have been fans of Clint Eastwood for a long time. I <laughs> like the sort of subtle ending to this movie. There's no big shootout or car chase or anything like that he just he gets kind of pulled over by the police and he gets out of his car and he gets arrested and he goes to jail no big dramatic ending and i kind of like that i mean with clint east i mean obviously i think part of that is to do with the fact that clint east couldn't do some big stunt anymore because he's 88 years old but i really like how they really did that without having some big grand 
you know, ending like Gran Torino, for example, which I really like Gran Torino, but, you know, he gets shot up at the end of Gran Torino or, you know, all of his old westerns where they have some big shootout or something. Yeah. Now, I'm not going to say this script is perfect. There are a couple things that are wrong with it. For example, there's a couple of things set up that don't pay off, I don't think. Uh, the main thing that comes to mind, he has this kind of, he kind of, well, okay, so there's this character that's, a, I guess he's the drug, the main drug lord's son, or he's related to him somehow, and he, and the, and the drug kingpin makes this guy go up and sort of chaperone Clint Eastwood's character around for a while, and this guy's unhappy about it at first, and he's really threatening toward Clint Eastwood at first, but by the end of their, like, uh, little ordeal together, they, he's kind of grown to like Clint Eastwood, but that Frank, but then he goes back to Mexico and figures out that the guy has killed the drug kingpin and everything. And that relationship with Clint Eastwood that he developed, who's Clint Eastwood's name is uh, Earl in this movie, uh, the the connection developed between and uh, the the guy I'm talking about, his name is I think his name's Julio. Julio. Yeah, I think he's Julio. All right, his name is Julio, and uh, Earl and Julio, their relationship never really pays off because the guy Julio just goes back to Mexico and then doesn't show up for the rest of the movie. Uh, so that was one thing. I mean, I thought they could have kind of thrown back in at the end somehow. You know, overall, I really enjoyed it. I think I think it's uh it's not going to be it's not one of Clint Eastwood's better directorial efforts, but or uh not one of his best anyway, but uh I'll give the story three and a half stars. All right. Um well, I pretty much agree with you on all your points. Um I think this is a really really well-written script. Um I don't really have any complaints with it at all. It's like like you said, it's very focused. Uh Nick Shank did a great job with this. It's crazy to know that this is somewhat inspired by true events. When they say inspired people, that means very illusory. <laughs> um, but, I mean, I, I really love how these characters are written in this movie, especially when it comes to Clint Eastwood and his quote-unquote family dynamic, um, I think is one of the strongest points of the entire film. Um, and I thoroughly enjoy seeing that. Like, like Aaron said, we learned from, toward the beginning of the movie, he has been more work-oriented instead of family-oriented for the majority of his life, and it's really put a strain on all of his relationships. And um, The opening scene actually takes place in 2005 as Earl is going to a national uh, daylily convention where he receives an award and uh, chooses to miss his daughter's wedding, which I think is really what put the, uh, the nail in the coffin on his relationship with his family and his daughter. He ends up not showing up for that, and then after that, we flash forward to, to 2017, and we see his house house being foreclosed on. And um, after that, he shows up at shows up at his, his granddaughter's uh, home or his his daughter's home, and they're there for a uh, a pre wedding party for his granddaughter. And we have this big uh, like conflict interaction with the family members, and I think it's a really great scene. I think it really really stresses that uh, that sh- that uh, strenuous relationship within the family, and I like that a lot. Um, quick point before you move on. I, I forgot to say this. I was going to... One other minor complaint I had. You said the film starts out in 2005. First of all, Clint Eastwood does not age any between 2005 and 2018. And also, it took... Because I don't think... They have a title card at the beginning telling us it's 2005. I don't think they have a title card telling us that they've jumped ahead to 2018. It took me a little bit to catch on that the granddaughter... They did. Oh, they did? Yeah. Oh, yeah, okay. It's, it, it's like right, right as that scene ends... Uh, it flashes forward, and right as he's walking out of the house, it says at the bottom of the screen, 2017. Okay, I take back everything I said. Please continue. <laughs> okay. Anyway, but then after this, we, like, like you thought from the trailers, I thought this was going to be like a story of someone who had been secretly a drug mule for the cartel his entire mm-hmm. life or whatever, and this was going to be his last hoorah or whatever. I was sadly mistaken. Not sadly. Still a great movie. Yeah. But after after everything, he meets this person at her party, and he's like, you know, if you're looking to make some extra money to help with your granddaughter and her wedding, I know some people that'll pay you to drive. He he has this clean record. Obviously, he he's an older older gentleman. He's in his eighties, and he has a completely clean driving record, never been pulled over once, and that's what really draws the cartel to him. After he starts making his runs, he starts, you know, it's only going to be a one time thing. But once the money starts rolling in, and he finds the money's good, obviously he continues to do it. Um, we get some really great scenes, too, with Bradley Cooper. I think one of the best scenes with Bradley Cooper in the film is uh, a scene with Clint Eastwood and Bradley Cooper sitting in a Waffle House outside of a motel. And the night before, they have apprehended a gentleman who they believe to be the man that they're looking for, who happens to be Clint Eastwood's character, Earl, obviously. Um, but they have no idea, and 
Clint Eastwood and Bradley Cooper sit down and have this entire conversation about don't waste your life away on work. Um, and it's a great, it's a great, great scene trying to tell someone from a younger generation, you know, um, learn from my mistakes. We may not know each other, but learn from my mistakes and, you know, do, do what's better for your family. Don't worry about work all the time. And I think it's really great that neither one of them knows who the other is really. But later on, obviously we find that out toward the end of the film, but film was great. I don't have any complaints with it. I'll give the story four stars. All right, so uh, acting, obviously, the main focus here is going to be the man <laughs> himself, uh, Clint Eastwood. You know, Clint Eastwood, I think, is one of the last surviving, like, what I would consider silver screen icons, like John Wayne. Kirk Douglas is, is uh, still alive, but he doesn't work anymore. Um, you know, people like that who are just, you know, everyone knows who they are. Clint Eastwood really, I think, is one of the last ones that I can think of right now that is not only still alive, still working. And, you know, he does a great job in this movie. Uh, I actually think one of the interesting things about his character and the way he portrays his character, in almost every movie Clint Eastwood has ever been in, he comes off as threatening, like he could, like he's going to mess somebody up. In this movie, he doesn't. He <clears throat> Obviously, some of that has to do with his advanced age. But uh, he comes off as kind of this kindly old man, especially at the beginning of the movie. I mean, he looks kind of rough towards the end when he's being beaten up and bloodied and everything. But, you know, he's not really a threatening character like he usually plays. Even in some of his more recent films, like Gran Torino, he's still kind of this gruff old, you know, mean old man. But not so much in this movie. I found, I found that really interesting and kind of a different uh, twist for a Clint Eastwood character. And the rest of the cast is fine. His um, granddaughter in the movie, played by... Uh, What's her name? Thaisa Farmiga. Ta yeah, Thaisa Farm Farmiga. Vera Farmiga's little sister. Yeah, Vera Farmiga's little sister. Uh, she's she's good in the movie. Obviously, uh, Bradley Cooper is probably the second star of this movie. He, uh, he's a really good. Michael uh, Pena, who good. plays his uh, partner, is really good. And then uh, the lady who plays his ex-wife, who is Diane West. Yes. Yes, Diane West. Really good. Um, and then his his actual, I guess is his actual daughter, Elisa uh, Allison, Allison Eastwood, Eastwood, plays his actual daughter in the movie. She's good, too. Uh, so no complaints from the acting. I think everybody does a fine job. All the drug cartel members do a fine job. So um, I'll give acting a solid four stars. All right. Like you said, Clint Eastwood is amazing in this movie. This is one of the better films I think I've seen him in, which I haven't seen him in some of his older stuff, which is, I know, a sin. <laughs> but, uh... Grand Trino is probably one of the best things I've seen him in. Uh, this is really good, though. I, I really like his performance. Like you said, it's it's a more subdued character for him to play. It's not, you know, like you said, uh, comes off as, like, menacing. He's just, you know, he's a flower guy, and he comes off across as that. He he, he seems like, you know, just your, your average Joe kind of run-of-the-mill guy, and he just happens to, you know, work for the drug cartel. Yeah, I, I could I honestly, coming in this movie, could never imagine Clint Eastwood as, like, some kind of guy who just stays around and grows flowers, but he did a good job selling that to me. Um, <laughs> one of the things I really like about how he plays his character is he, he really does portray, you know, this this friendly this friendly vibe. Even when he's meeting these very dangerous people, when he first meets the drug cartel people as he goes to El Paso for the first time for his first run, he's very friendly with them. They're like, you know, here's a phone. He's like, uh, they're like, if we text you, you know, we need you to answer. He's like, texting, what's that? <laughs> He's cracking uh, jokes all the time. The he does time crack jokes movie. the entire movie, and I love it. Some of them are a little inappropriate. <laughs> <laughs> but he, he does such a great job. He, he plays he plays such a great character in this movie. Bradley Cooper, as always, is pretty much great. Um, Michael Pena is, is also really good in the movie. Um, Taisa Farmiga, I think she does a really good job as his granddaughter, what she's in, as well as Allison Eastwood does a, does a great job of his daughter. Um, they all portray that strange relationship very well. Diane West, for the most part, I, I, she, she is good in the movie. I did find her character slightly annoying at times. I don't know if that's just the way certain scenes were written for her character, but there were like a couple select few scenes where I just found like the way she was portraying this character to be a little bit, a little bit annoying. But she does give a great performance. I think everyone's really good in this movie. Um, like you said, everyone that's involved with the drug cartel. I mean. They do, they do good for what their parts are. So um, I'll give the acting four stars as well. All right, so hodgepodge. Um, I don't think there's any CGI in this movie, as far as I could tell. The uh, what little makeup effects like are good, like when Clint Eastwood's beaten and bloodied at the end. Direction from Clint Eastwood. Obviously, by this point, Clint Eastwood is a very seasoned director. I think it's all really great. I, I love some of the like uh, camera shots and everything done in this movie especially uh like at the when he's driving and he'll just like having like panning shots of him driving and 
Like, we actually have kind of a montage at one point of him driving a little bit. And then it'll do, like, at the bottom of the screen, we'll have title cards that tell us, like... Like a run number or whatever. First run, second run, yeah. And he gets a, and as a director, he gets a great performance out of himself. <laughs> <laughs> and out of everybody else, uh, as, you know, always. Him and Bradley Cooper, I guess, by this point, probably have a really great working relationship. So, and uh, soundtrack, I mean, there's not much of it. There's very little music in this movie. It's a very quiet movie. No, I mean, like, as far as not a lot of loud booms and stuff or anything. Uh, so, I mean, it, it's serviceable. It does what it's meant to do. Uh, so, I mean, really not much else to say in a hodgepodge section, I don't guess. Uh, sure. I'll give it four stars. <laughs> right, yeah. On, on my hodgepodge section, like you said, Clint Eastwood does a, does a great job directing this film. Uh, he, like you said, he's, he's definitely very seasoned at this point. You can tell by the way this film turned out. I, um, the cinematography in this film is excellent. Um, there are some great tracking shots, like you said, of the of the car um, painting around different angles of this car, looking in on him through the windshield. Um, some of my favorite shots are when he's driving and he's just like sitting there singing songs in his yeah. car, which is a, which is a great time because it's funny to hear him sing all these songs. He, but he he does a great job getting the performances out of the other actors in this film as a director. Um, one of my favorite shots in the entire movie is one after he's been beaten and it's almost. I mean, he looks like directly at the camera, like side eyes you at the camera, like yeah. toward the end of the film after he's been beaten and bloodied up, like right before he gets, you know, stopped by the police and arrested. I mean, I think it's a great shot. And it's almost like a, this is my final run, boys. Uh, it's yeah. time to call it quits kind of look. Uh, hey, which I almost... wouldn't be surprised if this is his last film and it's kind of, you know, all right, guys, this is my last run. I'll see you guys later kind of thing. Uh, I really love that shot. Everything else is filmed great. Like I said, uh, he does a great job directing this movie. Uh, like, soundtrack, it's not really, I wouldn't say there's really a whole lot of score to this movie. It really is a soundtrack, and it's just, you know, different songs that Clint Eastwood has playing in his car. And it's a fun time. I mean, we hear On the Road Again once or twice, and a lot of other songs, and it's, it's a really good time. But overall, I, I think, like I said, well directed. I'll give it a, I'll give it four stars, too. All right, so overall, so I guess <laughs> when Clint Eastwood passes away, and they do the, um, Clint Eastwood must see box set of I don't know ten movies or whatever. This movie probably won't be on it. It's not up there with his better works like Unforgiven, um, Million Dollar Baby, some of his classic westerns like Fistful of do Dollars and Good, the Bad, the Ugly. The Good, Bad, the Ugly. Dirty and Harry. Dirty Harry and uh, Every Which Way But Loose, which is not a western, but uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's not going to be in that box set. But but it's still a solid movie. I got no. It's definitely. It's definitely uh, not. It's definitely. I mean, not his worst work by any stretch of the imagination. It's uh, uh, really entertaining. I found it to be. It's, it's funny. It's serious. You could read it like you were talking about. As I mean, if he decided not to star in another movie, I'm sure he'll. I'm sure he probably already has a couple more directing gigs like lined up. But if he, if he decides not to star in another movie, I think this would be a good way to go out. It's kind of a almost meta, <laughs> like. Uh, Good Boss One song for him in this movie is. And there's like you said, there's a couple of points where he almost is in danger of breaking the fourth wall, kind of hinting at the audience, this is, this is the last run, here we go. And I think it's a good, if it is his one song, as far as his acting career goes, to go, uh, as far as his acting it's, career it's goes. It's a great way to go out. It's a good way to go out. Like I said, there are a couple of some story problems, minor story problems, but overall it's well written, well acted, well directed. I'll give this movie, I'll give it three and a half stars. Well, well actually, mean, actually, three and a half aging Clint Eastwoods out of five. Aging Clint Eastwoods. <laughs> yeah, no, every, everything you've said about this movie and I've said about this movie is completely true. This movie is very well written. Um, I don't have any complaints to the story. I, I mean, I don't have any problems even with the, the, the few minor things that you mentioned. Well acted, uh, amazingly acted from on Clint Eastwood's part, especially in Bradley Cooper's part. Uh, very well directed, very well filmed. Everything about this movie is really good. And if this does happen to be Clint Eastwood's last last role as an actor, like 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 we both said, it's a great way to go out. And it really is that kind of movie, you know. Like 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 I said, um, the way some of those shots are filmed, it really does seem like it could be his last film. And I would not have a problem with that because it's it's a really good one. But as as far as everything goes, I think I'll go ahead and give it um I'll give it four stars. All right, so I guess that concludes our discussion about this movie. Um. Just talk about what we got coming up, man. Yeah, we got, obviously, we got Bumblebee, mm -hmm. Spider-Man, 
Um, in our discussion episode prior to those films, we will be doing something really fun. We'll be ranking all the live-action Spider-Man movies. Uh, all, all the ones since Sam Raimi's first Spider-Man, what I should say. And then uh, all the Transformers all movies. All the Transformers, including the animated movie, because I think it's a major point in the Transformers um, life cycle. That's the first time we've done a ranking of, of a group of films in a while, I think. Yeah, so uh, we'll, we're going to have two in one episode. It'd Looking really forward fun. to that. I'm a big fan of both franchises. Um, after that, we will have our reviews of Aquaman, followed by Mary Poppins Returns, yeah, as and, well as the discussion for that. Uh, and the discussion for that, I think we're also going to do something really fun. We're going to rank the DC, DCEU films. That's going to be uh, that's going to be fun. Fun, maybe in quotations. And after Mary Poppins, we'll, we haven't decided. We're either going to do... What will probably end up happening is we'll probably end up ranking uh, Emily Blunt movies. I don't know if I've seen five Emily Blunt movies. I don't know. We'll, we'll, talk, we'll figure it out. We'll figure it out. I've probably seen about we try to keep, We try to keep ourselves on our on our own toes. On our own toes, yeah. <laughs> by, by the seat of our pants. All right. So, um, <laughs> I guess that's all we got for this episode. Yeah, absolutely. Um, as always, we know we got to plug those social medias. We are uh, on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. We're at DNA Film Wars, all lowercase, no space, on all those platforms. So if you want to, go ahead and give us a like or a follow. If you have any specific questions and or comments, you can find us at, or contact us at dnafilmwars at gmail.com. We are up on all major podcatching services. Please feel free to leave us a review. If you cannot find us on one of those podcatching services or you choose not to listen to us on one of those, you can always find us up on YouTube um, with our audio files. Keep a lookout for videos in the new year. Yep, and uh, with all that being said, um, I'm Aaron. I'm Dylan, and we'll catch you in the next one. I was a terrible father. Terrible husband. Blew my chance. I didn't deserve forgiveness. This is the last one. So help me God. This is the last one. For what it's worth, I'm sorry for everything.